Hey guys, so the video for today is tips and tricks for an outdoor off-grid shower. Now, we don't have running water, we have a hand pump that actually has to be pumped, so we try to minimize our water usage. For our family of four, we go through probably about four gallons of water a day for drinking and for food preparation. And then we use about two gallons of water a day for showering, hand washing, that kind of thing. The girls and I shower here, so there's three of us showering, and we use about a gallon and a half of water a day to shower. We do shower every single day. The reason for this is that we have a lot of biting insects. They get trapped in our clothes and, and that kind of thing, so it feels really nice to, to wash at night and know that you're clean and that the bugs are off of you. And also, we have a lot of herbicide and pesticide spraying in our area. And that is the bigger reason why we shower every single day. So um, I don't wash my hair every day. I wash about every three or four days, but I do brush it really thoroughly every day so that I know that I am getting dust and dirt out of it and it also uh, stimulates my scalp. I took a little video of me taking an outdoor shower and I'm not sure how much of that I'm gonna talk over the top of or how much I'll let myself talk. The rules of the outdoor off-grid shower are first pick your time there is a golden hour there's a time during the day when it's not hot when you're about ready to get to bed but it isn't dark yet we don't have electricity in the cabin and I don't want to take a kerosene lamp out with me to shower and so I prefer to shower at twilight just before it starts to get dark and right now that's about eight nine o'clock at night the reason for that, besides the fact that I'm about to go to bed, is that about that time of night, I don't have any horse flies and the mosquitoes haven't quite come out. I don't know what time that would be in your area, but for me that's like somewhere between 8 and 9 o'clock. The other thing is use hot water. Make sure to use hot water. We heat the water up out on our camp stove. We do one gallon of water to uh, uh, one gallon of hot water to three gallons of cold water, and it seems to be a magical mixture. So, I feel like if you change completely, dump the water out maybe once a week, and start over new, then you keep from having insects fall into the water. Um, next, I like to use a hose nozzle instead of the nozzle that comes with our agricultural sprayer. The reason is is that even though it uses a lot more water, it uh, it gets you clean faster. So instead of taking five minutes to take a shower, it takes me about one minute to take a shower. And that's with soaping everything up. That's not with washing my hair. The girls also are very fast at it. So the hose, the, and there is a YouTube video out there that shows how to remove the little mist sprayer and put on the hose sprayer. And it just needs a couple more attachments for the hardware store and it's super easy. Next, put some shelves in your outdoor shower, and if you're not going to get a longer hose for your agricultural sprayer, build a bench. I do need to build a bench still for ours. I, I've been finishing the inside of the cabin, as you can see, and I keep forgetting to go out and just put in a bench. Uh, we have been using the little ledge of 2x4, and it holds the shampoo pretty well, but it would be nice to have it a little bit sturdier. We have hooks in the outdoor shower to hang our clothes on, and I really like that because it's, it's, it's an outdoor shower. You're going to have earwigs and other things in there. It's just nice to have a hook. And I like to keep the laundry. I like to keep the laundry basket outside the shower so I can just throw my clothes into it over the side. If you leave your clothes out in the outdoor shower, they'll get wet the next time somebody else comes in. Or you could have insects climb into them, which you don't want. Um, uh, either that or take your clothes in with you when you go into the house. That is also a good idea. Let's see the next one. I like to use cast aisle soap for everything except my hair. The reason is is that it is liquid. By being liquid, it means I don't have to add water to it in order to get it to lather. Instead, I can get myself wet. I can put a few drops of cast aisle soap in, lather it up, get everything washed. It's just a speed thing. It's just more convenient because with the spray nozzle, you do have to hold it in your hand. You know, it's, it's nicer just to be able to lather up. I, I really like the Dr. Bronner soap. And if you can get it with tea tree oil in it, so much the better because it keeps the mosquitoes away while you're showering. As you are naked, uh, the insects can be voracious and I have had a couple times where I wasn't using the Dr. Bronner soap and I felt like I got bit more. When you are washing your hair, I really have no recommendations except I really like Giovanni's uh, organic shampoo. Um, I am not putting the water from the outdoor shower onto any plants. It's just a gray water system that goes into the ground. It's not standing water at all. 
and so I I don't feel terribly bad about just using my conventional shampoo. It, it doesn't have sulfates in it. It's as mild as I can get it, as chemical free as I can get it, but it is not cast aisle soap and it is not necessarily something you want going into a stream to my understanding. And so pick wisely there, I use Giovanni's. When it comes to kids, make sure to check behind their ears, check that their faces get wet. Uh, I did for the first several times shower with the girls so that I could explain to them how to get their backs, not to get their hair every time, how to wash their feet with it. And so as with anything, it's nice to show the kids how to use it first before you let them do it by themselves. And I have a little Paigey who likes to waste water by sitting and playing with it. And so she's the one that gets to fill the shower now. So I hope that was helpful to you guys. I am really enjoying our outdoor shower. I find it very soothing. Even John, when he's taken a shower in it a couple times, it feels just very organic to be out there. And if your water is nice and warm, it's a very pleasant experience. I always feel very clean after I shower outside. Um, you think maybe you'd still feel sticky or grungy or something, but I always I feel just as clean after my outdoor shower as I do if I'm using a shower that took five gallons, ten gallons of water at my mom's. Um, and you get to look at the leaves at the same time, so I highly recommend it. I don't think that um, I quite have it worked out for winter time. That is for another video, I, but I'm trying to think through that at this point. Once it's not summer, once it's not warm anymore. It would be a bad idea to be showering outside, so I am working on a system to be able to shower inside the cabin as well. Um, but again, that's for another story, so. I'm a little bit particular about my showers. Although, I totally do back you up on- It's nice though, right? Being out here. It's in nature. really nice. Having the nature shower, getting with the nature. Being on nature. If you like this shower video, make sure to go check out our first one that was about the building of the off grid shower and the learning curve that went with that, and that we changed a few times before we got it to where it is now. We really enjoy it, and we'll talk to you later.